This is Twit. Well, you know, one of the things that makes things hard right now is that with the cloud, with virtual machines, we've gotten into a computing era of multiple layers of abstraction. Uh, applications, services, applets, uh, no code, uh, everything means that sooner or later you have to trust something, but where that trust exists, well, it can be difficult to pin down. Uh, Neil McDonald, a distinguished research vice president at Gartner, said that everything depends on the trust and resilience of the layers below it. So if you want real trust, you have to go in and establish that trust at the lowest possible level. And that's the, where the concept of a hardware-based root of trust comes in. The idea here is that the computer will always boot with legitimate code. Doug Haskell, senior manager of security and open firmware futures at HPE, says a root of trust is ideally based on a hardware validated boot process that ensures the system can only be started using codes from an immutable source. Now, this isn't new. Uh, the trusted platform module or TPM uh, is almost certainly inside any laptop or desktop computer you're using right now. That is a foundation piece. Now, this is firmware, firmware supported by ARM, AMD, Intel, and a lot of other special purpose hardware. However, there are efforts in the industry to put that root of trust a little deeper into the chipset. Why? because there have been some firmware vulnerabilities like TPM fail, Meltdown, and Spectre. DARPA, the same people who gave us the internet long, long ago, have come out with the Secure Silicon Initiative, which is in, uh, supposed to make processors more inherently secure. The good news is that a growing number of hardware infrastructure and cloud companies like HPE, Dell, AWS, Microsoft, and Google are engineering more secure systems based on this deeper hardware root of trust. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk to my, my co-host about this. Lou, you first, because you're involved in the kind of software that enterprises use on a moment by moment basis. How valuable is this idea of having a hardware level? I mean, not even firmware, but a hardware level root of trust that all of the subsequent layers can be built upon. You know, it's, it's really important because it, it also builds upon the fact that you can do some really complex things, encryption and so on, without having to have additional hardware to do it. Um, and I think that that's one of the biggest things because it, it basically lowers that barrier of entry for software developers, for hardware developers to maintain um, uh, that security around things. And I, and I think that that's where that root of trust can stem from. Um, you know, obviously, if you build upon those layers, like, for instance, you add the ability to detect presence, um, you know, I use YubiKeys for that. Um, you know, there's lots of other things you can build upon layers upon layers. And when you know you start with that really good foundation, a really good root, uh, you know you, you know, whatever you add on top is obviously just icing on the cake, additional layers of security. So, yeah, I think that that's one of the biggest things is that with these types of hardware abstractions, it gives developers and software makers and service makers a way to, to focus more on their layers and their areas rather than having to worry about, you know, the device being compromised or, um, or, you know, data being leaked out. So, you know, I think that when you're buying a device for your organization, a lot of times you're going to say, Oh, let's go find the most powerful, cheapest device out there. But if you're not looking for things like, you know, whether the device has TPM chip and whether it supports 2.0 firmwares for those TPMs, like these are things that you should be making, paying attention to, only because those are the latest and greatest ways that organizations can take more advantage to more secure hardware, more secure software, encryption, and so on. So, you know, I think I think it's a big thing, and I think that organizations should pay more attention to it. 
Well, I agree that this is the sort of thing that that organizations should have firmly in their crosshairs. Now, Brian, I want to turn to you because as we've heard it talked about and as Lou has discussed, this sounds like the sort of thing that is so good in every situation. And therefore, there, there really doesn't need to be any discussion about this. Companies should insist upon it. No one should buy anything without it. And we will be secure forevermore. Um, what, what's wrong with what I've just said? Well, what's, what's wrong is what I haven't heard. Um, the big hypervisor players um, have long touted they want to be able to do load balancing, be able to shrink and expand the virtual machine or the cloud uh, upon demand and load. Well, what happens when the TPM chip is, say, tied to a blade in a blade server? Is there going to be a TPM chip for a blade array or a cloud array? Um, that's something that I keep asking. It goes, well, how are you going to store this? How is it going to cross between blades? Because one of our favorite things is you run full blast, you have you know x x number of um, virtual machines running to load balance, then it goes you know it's it's after dark, um, the load isn't there. I don't want to have to pay for say thirty virtual machines running. I want to shrink it back say to one or two. But what happened to all my encryption information? What happened to my trusted root? Um, is that going to be there? I think that's something that needs to be in this standard. We need to have a way for the hardware uh, to handle load balancing across multiple physical platforms. And I just haven't heard that in the conversation so far. Well, obviously, the answer is to have a single TPM that serves all the virtual machines, all the customers, and everything shared across all the tenants in a shared space. After all, history has shown that nothing could possibly go wrong in a scenario like that. Uh, you know, Brian's quite right. This is one of many things where the devil is absolutely in the details. Uh, I think it's a good thing that we're looking at this. It is absolutely true that the lower in the stack we have this root of trust, the better things can be. But what we don't want to do is introduce yet another universal vulnerability. We saw just how much fun spectrum and meltdown can be. Imagine if something were a couple of layers below that. Um, I could just go ahead and plan to retire on that level of vulnerability. I'd be writing about it uh, for as long as my fingers would move. Well, that's it for this intriguing bite. Something tells me we'll hear more about this later on. Uh, I can't believe this will be the last release about this particular issue.